in West Michigan accidentally shares a photo leading to an arrest thousands of miles away. News Channel 3's Ali Jennerjohn joins us at the state police post in Marshall to tell us how a young girl helped uncover hundreds of sexually abusive images of kids. Ali. Investigators here say an 11 year old girl in Branch County sent an inappropriate picture of herself by mistake. Now police say that she received more demands for more photos on Snapchat. That's when she told her parents and an investigation started, leading police to a teen in England. Hiding their cell phone, fighting back when you ask to see it, and oversharing personal information. These are just three of the warning signs Michigan State Police Detective Sergeant Matt Barry says parents need to look out for. You need to step in as a parent and, and do more to ensure the safety of your child because you never know when something innocent might become something terrible. Police say an 11 year old girl in Branch County accidentally sent an inappropriate photo over Snapchat to someone she thought was a 15 year old girl. That person then continued to communicate with the 11 year old and started to try to blackmail her into sending more photos trying to say that if you don't give us more we're going to put this out on the web we're going to tell your friends your family all of that. Investigators say the child told her parents who went to police. Michigan State police obtained a court order to search the suspect's Snapchat. That's when we discovered that in addition to our victim's photo, there were virtually hundreds of other photos and video files of lots of other people. Barry says a 17 year old boy in England has been arrested. Now Barry warns parents to be aware of sites and apps that ask for personal information like locations, ages and schools. The parents need to be involved with their kids. They need to interact with their kids. They need to know what they're doing, when they're doing it online, um, how they're doing it and who they're doing it with. Barry says none of the other victims appear to be from West Michigan. He does warn though that possessing or sending in the state of Michigan a sexually abusive photo of a minor is a felony. An emotional Kalamazoo public school board meeting tonight as parents and even a student take their serious concerns to district leaders. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano spent the entire night at that meeting. She joins us live in Kalamazoo now to explain why many are not comfortable with the school's COVID-19 response. Maria. Erica, concerns with COVID, a big theme tonight. I can tell you a 15-year-old Kalamazoo public school student Kalamazoo Public School student even criticizing board members for not knowing that a, co that a KPS student died from COVID-19. They did not address this in its last meeting, so she made sure to voice those concerns. Vice President of the Board Tiana Harrison says they did not know about this, and if they'd known, they would have addressed it immediately. Families are sick and dying because they're getting COVID from school. Um, and I just ask the board to feel the anguish and the hurt and the sorrow that we as a community have felt. How many more will die before you do the right thing and just close for two weeks or more? What if it was your daughter? What if it was your sister? What if it was your friend? If it affected you, would you be willing to take action then? I'm having a hard time feeling sympathy for the administration. A Kalamazoo High School student voices her COVID-19 complaints to the school board. Some parents and educators also pleading with the board to consider moving to all virtual learning. Go into our schools and see what's happening. Amanda Miller serves as a teachers union president for Kalamazoo Public Schools. She says educators feel burnt out because staffing shortages are adding to their workload every day. Violence has risen. Community members and students have passed from COVID and we are seeing a high rate of absenteeism. Assistant Superintendent Jim English addressing the staffing shortages and encouraging the board to be forward thinking with state funding expected to rise. Now we finally have some more money and there's no one to hire. As a state, we're going to have to be on the leading edge for solving this. English says the district needs to focus on hiring, retaining, and making Kalamazoo Public Schools a place where people want to work. The real challenge is in attracting employees. And, and I'll just say it, we're going to have to pay more in, in a lot of instances to have quality people working at KPS. KPS has had a mask mandate in place all year tonight. The superintendent saying she plans on keeping it until the end of the year. It's right now.
Welcome back to News Channel 3 Live at 11. I'm Erica Moke. No one plans for going from raising two healthy, strong children to everything changing in a moment. That's what happened to an Allegan County family. Brothers Jaden and Jurian Schaffer suffered severe injuries in a sledding accident one year ago today. Tonight, for the first time, we are hearing from the boys and their parents. Mary Freebed Rehabilitation Hospital provided us with this footage in an exclusive look at their road to recovery. Here's News Channel 3's Kirk Mason. A beautiful family of four, mom, dad, two brothers, countless pictures filled with wonderful memories. But on January 27th, 2021, it all changed. We heard them screaming and at first we thought, like they're just playing. Josh is like, I think something's wrong. And Brothers Jaden and Jurian were being pulled on a sled by a snowmobile. Their parents say a mistaken squeeze of the throttle increased the speed rapidly, and both boys were slammed into a tree. Well, I remember looking down at Jaden and just seeing him unconscious there, and I kind of freaked out and was scared that he might not make it. Parents Josh and Tennille Schaffer were inside their house. They came out to a terrifying sight. They were both just laying there, and Jurian was completely awake, just screaming. And then Jaden was... I don't know. We didn't think he was going to make it. He was unconscious. And Jurian's leg shattered. Doctors calling it the worst break they'd ever seen. Brother Jaden, even worse. His pelvis broken in three spots and a brain injury. His parents did not know if Jaden would survive. It was awful. The children were taken to Bronson Hospital in Kalamazoo. Days after the accident, we had a camera there when friends and family held a candlelight vigil outside. Friends were talking to Jaden through a microphone and they started playing the song, The Blessing by Carrie Job. It's one of our kids' favorite songs. They played it all the time right before their accident. They had just discovered that song. And um, when they played it, Jaden's brain pressure started coming down on its own for the first time. The inspiration outside Bronson Hospital from friends and family important, but the work inside by doctors even more important. I was on call. The surgeon noticing something important surgeon. about the older brother. You think a kid that age is going to be very tearful, but he was very stoic and almost more like a man than a child. Brother Jaden would have to go to Mary Freebed Rehabilitation Hospital in Grand Rapids. Jaden's mom and dad would, you know, take video and show me, oh, this is what he did in therapy. And and just those little progresses um, throughout really added up. After 93 days in the hospital, Jaden went home. Both boys are working to return to their love of sports. You gonna score? The basketball and ping pong doesn't look like it once did, oh. but it's progress. Both boys are back in school, and younger brother Jaden has his sense of humor back, despite the brain injury. Who usually wins when you guys play? Do you want me to be honest? I like to say I win. Sometimes, I do win, but mostly him. Being back home with mom and dad means both kids are winning. 